everyone here in today's video session we're looking to the most favorable questions what will be appearing in dcet for the subject digital and computer fundamentals in fact this particular topic will be covering around 10 marks and uh, this is under your module 1 so the most favorable questions what will be appearing for the dcet will be discussed in the upcoming sessions and we'll also discuss the answers for them so let's just look into the brief blow up of the syllabus of the topics what gets covered under digital and computer fundamentals so the syllabus goes like this the first topic here what we are going to cover is all about number systems and under number systems we have binary octal decimal and hexadecimal conversion from one number system to other complement methods and various operations in the complement ascii codes logical gates combinational circuits encoders adders subtractors decoders seven segment decoders multiplexers various kinds of multiplexers and demultiplexers moving on further we will be looking into the basics of computers and computer software in the computer fundamentals we will be looking into the introduction the various characteristics of the computers evolution of the computers the various generation of the computers classification computer system and also its applications moving on to the software part we are looking into the various software categories what are the different languages that we use in the computers what are the different peripherals and the memory devices also we look into the input and output devices and coming to the memory we will discuss regarding ram rom types of rom the various secondary memory such as hard disk optical disk and under optical disk we will be looking into what are these dvds and what are these blu rays and how do they actually work into going on to the very first question which of the following is not a positional number system positional number system means I'll write down the things here. Positional number means a number which is not represented in terms of ones and zeros. A number which is not written in terms of ones and zeros. So when I speak about the number, my numbers in case of my digital system are always written in terms of one or zeros. This is how I normally will be writing a number in case of my digital system. I will be writing it as 1010.0110. So, these are all positional number systems. So, based on the base, what I give to this particular number, based on the base, what I give, it may be 2, it may be 8, or it may be 10, or it may be 16. Based on the number, what I give to this particular number, I will be calling them, them as binary number, octal number, decimal number, or hexadecimal number. The question here is which of the following is not a positional number system so here octal system is a positional number system binary is also positional hexadecimal is also positional roman number system is not a positional number system because here i represent my numbers as one two or three or maybe five or maybe ten or maybe twenty in this format so the answer to this question is roman number system Moving on to the next question, the value of radix in binary number system is, so this radix actually means base. So once you represent a number in binary system, for example, I write it like this, 1100. They are asking, what is the base value in the binary system? In the base value, my value will be, or my base value is 2. So the answer to this question is 2, or you can say, this is your right answer so 2 is your answer and the explanation has been given here in case if you want to refer it for the future third question the binary equivalent of the decimal number 10 is so how do you represent 10 in binary system 1 is represented as 0 0 0 1 2 is represented as 0 0 1 0 3 is represented as 0 0 1 1 4 is represented as 0 one zero zero. Very similarly, how do you represent ten? 
so 10 will be represented as so this will be 1 0 1 0 so this is actually 1 into 2 to the power 3 plus 0 plus 1 into 2 to the power 1 plus 0 so this will be 8 plus 2 which will be equal to 10 so 1010 is the representation of your decimal number 10 in binary decimal system very similarly the answer and the explanation in a different way here what they have done is what they have done is they have taken 10 and they have divided by 2 so this will be 2 5s are 10 with a remainder of 0 again 2 2s are 4 and remainder is 1 again 2 1s are 1 and 1 0 so you will write it as 1 0 1 0 in this fashion 1 0 and 1 0 so this is your right answer so you can write the decimal a binary equivalent of any decimal number in both the ways you can write it in this manner or you can write it in this manner also yeah going on further the octal equivalent of 1101101.1001010 so when i speak about octal equivalent i need to divide this number into three this is first category second third and fourth so this will be one itself this will be one into two to the power of two so this will be four this is one into two to the power of two plus one into two to the power of zero so this will be five this is one this is two so it is 145.12 so this is your right answer okay the input hexadecimal representation of 0 i mean 1110s so let me write it down here 1 into 2 to the power 3 plus 1 into 2 to the power 2 plus 1 into 2 to the power 1 plus 0 this is 8 plus 2 8 plus 8 plus 4 8 plus 4 is 12 12 plus 1 is this is 8 right yeah this is 8 8 plus 4 12 12 plus 2 is 14 so 14 how do you represent 14 in terms of your hexadecimal representation so here it is uh, in hexadecimal 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 after 9 in hexadecimal you write it as a this is b c d e and f so this is your 10 this is your 11 this is your 12 and this is your 13 and this is your 14 and this is your 15 after f you will write 10 10 is nothing but your 16 so the answer what i am looking is this one so the representation is e the answer with the explanation a bit in a computer terminology means zeros and ones yes my computer normally understands the any of your data in terms of zeros and ones only so one bit means it should either be zero and one henceforth true is the right answer which of the following is the correct representation of a binary number as i said you previously binary number will always be having a base of two so here if you check out this is having a base of two but one can be a binary number but two cannot be a binary number because this can this should be in terms of your zeros and ones so this is wrong this one is wrong because my two is present here this one this is also wrong because this doesn't have a base whereas here this is your right answer because i can also write it as maybe something like this will also do this will also be a right answer but i need to be having a number represented in terms of zeros and ones with a base of two so your answer is zero 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 to the base of two okay once complement of 1011 is what do you mean by once complement whatever number is given to you here should be inverted so this will be 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 so check out where is that answer so the answer is here so c is your 
right answer. On subtracting, this is actually to the base 2, this is actually to the base 2. On subtracting 0, 0, 1, 0, 2 from 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 to the base 2 using 2's complement we get. How do you do that as? This is my first number, okay, from, this is my first number and this is my second number. So, how do I go with the 2's complement subtraction is? I will write 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Second number is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. This is my second number. I will try to take the 1's complement of the second number. 1's complement will be 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And I will add plus 1 to the complemented 1. So, this will become 0, 0, will become 0 with a carry of 1, 0, 1 and 1. So, you take the second number and you take the 2's complement of the second number. So, you take the 1's complement of the second number and you try to add 1 to that. So, that will become the 2's complement and this number should be added to your first number. That number should be added to your first number. So, this will be 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 which is my first number plus 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. So, this will be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and 1. So, this is your answer. But as this has got 6 digits, this has got 7 digits. So, if 1 is additional here, you just drop off this particular 1. So, your answer will be 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So, check out where is your answer. So, this is your right answer. That is your right answer. This is how you carry on the two's complement with explanation for that. A dash is a circuit with only one input but can have multiple outputs. So, what is this? A circuit which can have only one input but can, one output but can have multiple outputs. For example, like this. Let us say this is my circuit. So, you can have any number of inputs here but it will have one output. And this circuit is what? What do you call this circuit? You call this as logic gate. You call this as logic gate. So, logic gate is a circuit which has one output which has and multiple inputs. Moving on. There are five universal gates. No, there cannot be five universal gates. There are only two universal gates. There are only two universal gates. One is NAND, other one is NOR. The remaining three are basic gates. So, there are five universal gates? No, this is your false answer. So, false is the right answer. False with explanation. The output is low if any one of the input is high in case of which gate? For example, let us like the, write it like this A and B and this is my output. Okay. So, the question says 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. 1, 1. The question says the output is low if any one of the input is high. So, this will be 0, this will be 0, this will be 1, this will be 0 and this will also be 0. So, this two table corresponds to which gate? So, this is what my question says. So, the two table corresponds to your NAND gate. My NAND gate has got all output lows when 1 or all the inputs are ones. So, this is your NAND gate. The figure or following figure shows which gate. So, which gate do you think it is? So, this actually is this one. You have a OR gate and to OR gate you have a NOT gate. So, what do you think this is? This will be your NOR gate. So, the circuit diagram here corresponds to your NOR gate. Let us check the answers. The circuit diagram, whatever they have given to you here, as per the thing what is given here, it should be a NOR gate. So, let us say that this answer is wrong. Let us say that this answer is wrong and let us write my right answer to be NOR. Fine, moving on further. So, it is given here. The figure is that of NOR gate. So, the bubble signifies it is a NOR gate. So, fine, NOR gate is the right answer. How many AND gates are required to realize the following expression? How many AND gates? AND gates does what? 
and get this multiplication. So, one multiplication operation here and one multiplication operation here. So, how many AND gates are required? 1 and 1. So, total it is 2 AND gates are required. Explanation with respect to that. Fine. Which of the following correctly describes the distributive law? Which one describes the distributive law correctly? This particular thing describes the distributive law very properly. So, in order to answer this, you need to be knowing the associative law, distributive law, De Morgan's law and all the laws should be known to you people. So, this describes your distributive law properly. In parts of the processes, add, adders are used to calculate what? What are they used to calculate? So, adders are normally used to calculate address. For example, let us say this is my memory, okay? This is my memory. So, after a particular memory block has been occupied, the next address will be calculated by the adder itself. So, yes, it will calculate the address. Increment and decrement operators, yes. Processor, in the processors, adders do the function of calculating the increment and decrement operators. It also does the table indices. So, normally my adders are used to calculate all the mentioned above. You can check the answers. Yes, it does all the functionalities. Moving on next. Total inputs to the half adder. For example, let us say this is my half adder. This is my half adder. It will have two outputs. One is your sum. Other one is your carry. So, how many inputs does it have? Half adder will have two inputs. A and B are the two inputs. So, it will have two inputs. In case if it was full adder, my full adder would have had three inputs. Fine. If A, B, C are the inputs of a full adder, then the carry is given by. In order to calculate the carry, you need to be able to write the truth table or you need to buy out this particular formula for the carry. The carry is given by this one. It is actually given by A, B plus B C plus C A. So, this is the carry of your full adder which is given here. The difference between the half adder and full adder is half adder has two inputs while the full adder has four output inputs. Half adder has one output while full adder has two inputs. Half adder has two inputs while full adder has three inputs. So, out of this, this is your right answer. To check half adder, half adder is like this. Two inputs, Two outputs. This is your half adder. If I go with the full adder, if I take a full adder, my full adder have three inputs and two outputs. So, third one is your right answer. How many inputs will a decimal to BCD encoder have? So, decimal to BCD encoder means it is around like this. Decimal. So, you will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So, this is your decimal 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up till 9. At the output side, you will have only 3. That let me say it as x, y and z. So, my decimal will have 10 inputs and 3 outputs. So, how many inputs will a decimal to BCD encoder have? It will have 10 inputs. As I said, inputs are 0 to 9 and the outputs are depending on the input lines. Fine. If we record any music in a recorder, such type of processor is called as, what do you call that process? You hear a music, right? You have a message, you have a message and the message is packed inside something. You pack the message inside something. So, this is called as encoding. This particular message is called as encoding. Suppose if you open this message and you get the message back again, you call this as decoding. So, you had a music and you had recorded it in a music recorder. So, you are encoding a music and if you are hearing to the music, that is called as decoding. Answer. Fine. If two inputs are active on the priority encoder, which will be coded on the output? 
So priority encoder means let's say that the two inputs are 10 and 6. 10 and 6 are the two inputs. So priority encoder which was which is having the highest priority 10 or 6. So obviously 10 is having higher priority and 6 is having the lower priority which will be coded on the output. The input which is having the higher value. Lower value will not be coded. The input which is having higher value will be coded. That is what this particular question is all about. The higher value will be encoded or coded to the output. An 8 bit encoder, how many combinations are possible? So, for example, let us say it is an encoder here. You have 8 things here. When it comes to the output, how many encoding combinations are possible? So, this goes with 2 to the power 8. So, depending on the inputs, your combinations are decided. So, encoder output will be decided by the number of inputs. A decoder converts n inputs into how many outputs? So, it will decode it into 2 to the power n outputs. So, remember this, okay. Remember this particular part regarding encoder and decoder. Encoder will always be encoding the message and decoder will always be decoding the message and there is a particular relationship between the number of inputs and the output lines. Okay. BCD to 7 segment conversion is what? You have a number, you have a number and you are displaying it in a 7 segment display. So, what do you call this particular conversion as? This particular conversion is called as decoding. You have a number, you have a number, let us say that uh, your number is BCD. BCD will normally be, for example, it is 0, 0, 1, 0. This number, once it is given to the 7 segment display, will be displayed like this. So, this was your message which was encoded and you unpack that particular message and this is what it is getting displayed. So, this is called as decoding. So, your 7 segment display will be decoding the things and decoding the message and that is called as decoding process. Decoders and encoders are doing the reverse operations. What do you think about this? Yes, they are doing the reverse operation. One is encoding and other one is decoding. Sorry, the answer here, here should be true. The answer here should be true. Fine. Which of the following represents the number of the output lines for a decoder with 4 inputs? So, how do you look into this? Again, I go about a decoder. So, this will be 2 to the power. How do you check this is? 2 to the power 4. 2 to the power 4 is 16. So, 16 is your right answer with respect to your decoder. So, for example, what they are saying is, uh, in the output side, if there are four output lines, uh, if there are four in, sorry, if there are four input lines, what are the number of outputs you can expect in an encoder? You can expect around 16 output lines, which is equal to 2 to the power 4. That is what this particular question is all about. How many select lines would be required for an 8 is to 1 multiplexer? You would have studied about your multiplexer. So, this is your 8 is to 1 multiplexer. So, you have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 lines. And at the output side, you will have only one output line. So, how many selector lines are needed? Out of 8 lines, 1 has to be selected. So, 2 to the power, how much is 8? 2 to the power, how much is 8? 2 to the power, 3 is 8. So, I need to be having 3 selector lines, which will be A, B and C. So, I need to be having 3 selector lines. So, that is 3. In the multiplexer, the output depends on the data controller, logic gates, selected lines, both data controller and selected lines. What do you think is the right answer? The right answer is selected lines because in the multiplexer, my output will be depending on the selector lines. For example, let us say that I have a 16 is to 1 multiplexer. There are 16 input lines and there is one output line. If the input given, if the selector lines are only 3, if the selector lines are only 3, then only 8 lines will be selected. The remaining 8 lines will go away. So, basically, my selector input will be deciding 
the output of a multiplexer. So, selected lines will be selecting the things. A digital multiplexer is a combination that selects one digital information from several, source, several sources and transmits the selected one. Many digital information and convert them into one. Many decimal inputs and transmits the selected information. Many decimal outputs and accept the selected information. What do you think is the right answer? The right answer for this is A. It selects one digital information from several sources and transmits that selected message or selected information. The explanation with respect to that. The word demultiplex means demultiplexer does what? Demultiplexer does one to many. Multiplexer does what? Multiplexer does does many to one. So demultiplexer does the opposite of multiplexer. So this is the right answer. It does one to many as well as you can call it as a distributor. One into many or you can call it as a distributor also. But normally I prefer to have the first one as the answer for this. So this will be your will not be your answer. One into many is the right answer. In 1 is to 4 D multiplexer, how many selector lines are needed? So D multiplexer, 1 is to 4. 1 is to 4 means 2 to the power, how much is 4? 2 to the power, 2 is 4, right? So I need to be having 2 selector lines. That is what it says. Which IC is used for the implementation of 1 is to 16 D multiplexer? You need to remember the IC number. The IC number here is 74154. You need to remember this IC number because there is no explanation for this. It's an inbuilt 1 is to 16 D multiplexer. So, this finishes off the first part that is digital electronics part, which is important for you people from the examination point of view. The next part will be explained by one more faculty, which is with respect to your computer fundamentals. In the fourth generation, time sharing, real time, network, and distributed operating system was used. The period of fourth generation was from 1971 to 1980. The computers of fourth generation used very large scale integrated circuit, that is VLSI circuit. The fourth generation computers became more powerful, compact, reliable, and affordable. In the fourth generation, time sharing, real time networks, distributed operating system were used. All the high level languages like C, C, V base, etc., were used in this generation. Batch processing was mainly used in the first generation. The period of first generation was from 1946 to 1959. The computers of first generation used vacuum tube as the basic components for memory and circuitry for CPU. In the first generation, mainly batch processing operating system was used. Punch cards, paper tape and magnetic tape was used as input and output devices. The computer in this generation used machine code as the programming language. An assembler is a program that reads each of the instructions in mnemonic form and translates it into the machine language equivalent. A language that uses mnemonic codes for the representation of machine language instruction is called assembly language. In short, an assembler is a program that converts assembly language into machine code. Each personal computer has a microprocessor that manages the computer's arithmetical, logical and control activity. That is, a microprocessor handles all the computer's arithmetical, logical and control activities. Each family of processor has its own set of instructions or handling various operations like getting input from keyboard, displaying the information on its screen and performing various other jobs. Question 38. The only language which the computer understands is machine language. The language that the computer can understand and execute is called machine language. Machine language is the only language a computer is capable of understanding. Question 39. Which of the following is not a characteristic of high level languages? 
machine code is not a characteristic of high level language high level language is not in machine language it is converted to machine language for further processing characteristics of high level language are they are platform independent they require interactive execution and they are user friendly that is easier to write read and maintain as a command question 40 the smallest unit of data in computer is bit the smallest unit of measurement used for measuring data is a bit a single bit can have a value of either 0 or 1 set of 8 bit is called a byte and set of 4 bit is called a nibble and kb stand for kilobyte and 1 kb is equal to 1000 byte question 41 what does the computer stand for the full form of computer is commonly operated machines used in technical and educational research question 42 which of the following is not a function of the output unit output unit does not supply the data and instruction to the computer for further processing the output unit is responsible for giving the results to the user in the form of printed report or visual display it is not responsible for giving the instruction back to the cpu for processing question 43 components that provide internal storage to the cpu are register the registers are the fast storage units they are responsible for storing intermediate computational result in the cpu the register can be user accessible or inaccessible question 44 pci stands for peripheral component interconnect pci or peripheral component interconnect is a high bandwidth bus that can function as a peripheral bus compared with other bus it delivers better system performance question 45 which of the following is used to hold running program instruction primary storage is used to hold running program instruction the primary storage is responsible for holding the data intermediate result and the results of ongoing process or jobs virtual storage is the main memory storage required for saving a large amount of data for future reference other options are invalid question 46 which of the following is non volatile storage secondary storage is the non volatile storage unit because the data is not lost when the power supply is dissipated power, primary memory is the volatile memory question 47 which of the following is used in main memory dram is used in main memory dram stands for dynamic random access memory dram is denser than static dram and therefore it is used in the main memory they are in the form of semiconductor ram question 48 a non erasable disk that stores digitalized audio information is cd cd stand for compact disk a compact disk stores digitized audio information the standard system uses 12 cm disks and can record more than 60 minutes of uninterrupted playing game question 49 the alu gives the output of the operations and the output is stored in registers any output generated by the alu gets stored in the register the registers are the temporary memory locations within the processor that are connected by signal path to the cpu question 50 data is the raw material used as input and instruction is the process data obtained as output of data processing data can be assumed as a raw material which in turn after processing gives the desired output in the form of instructions further a set of ordered and meaningful instruction is known as a program question 51 the heart of the processor which performs many different operation is 
arithmetic and logic unit that is alu the arithmetic and logic unit performs all the basic operations of the computer system it performs all the arithmetic as well as logical operations arithmetic operations are addition subtraction multiplication division etc logical operations are and or not etc question 52 the part of the processor which contains hardware necessary to perform all the operations required by a computer is data path a processor is a part of the computer which does all the data manipulation and decision making process the processor comprises of a data path which contains the hardware necessary to perform all the operations a controller tells the data path what needs to be done the register acts as a intermediate storage for the data question 53 the physical devices of a computer is hardware the hardware refers to the physical devices of a computer system software refers to a collection of programs a program is a sequence of instruction the option package and system software are softwares Question 54 which of the following is designed to control the operations of a computer system software is designed to control the operations of a computer software is basically classified into two types system software and application software system software is designed to control the operations and extend the processing capability of a computer system an application software is a program or a group of program designed for end users example for app are a word processor a spreadsheet an accounting application a web browser an email client a media player etc an utility software is a software designed to help to analyze configure optimize or maintain a computer question 55 what do you call a program in execution a program in execution is called a process a program is a set of instruction a program in execution is called a process in computer programming a task is a basic unit of programming that an operating system controls and a command is a directive to a computer program to perform a specific task the size of the main memory mainly depends on the size of the address bus the size of main memory depends on the size of the address bus of the cpu the main memory mainly consists of ram and rom where ram consists of the current data and programs and rom contain permanent program like bios question 57 which of the following is the fastest means of memory access for cpu registers is the fastest means of memory access for cpu the registers are the fastest means of access for cpu registers are the small memory locations which are present closest to cpu question 58 which of the following is independent of the address bus secondary memory is independent of the address bus it increases the storage space it is implemented in the form of magnetic storage device the number of clock cycles per second is referred as clock speed or clock rate the number of clock cycles per second is the clock speed or clock rate it is generally measured in gigahertz or megahertz question 60 cisc stands for complex instruction set computer full form of cisc is complex instruction set computer is a computer architecture where in the processor performs more complex operation in one step question 61 magnetic tape is a type of sequential access devices magnetic tapes are sequential access devices they are the secondary storage devices and are used to store large amounts of data in sequential access data can be retrieved in the same sequence in which it is stored question 62 the number of characters per second that can be transmitted to the memory from the tape is denoted by the term data transfer rate transfer rate is measured using the unit bytes per second or bps 
Question 63. The disc surface is divided into a number of invisible concentric circles called tracks. The concentric circles are called as tracks. The tracks are numbered consecutively from the outermost to the innermost starting from 0. The number of tracks on a disc may be as few as 40 on small capacity disc to the several thousand on the large capacity disc. Question 64. Disc access time does not depend on the which of the following factors. The disc access time depends on the seek time, latency and transfer rate. Whereas the seek time is the time required to position the read write head over the desired track. So the correct answer is arrival rate. Question 65. The time required to spin the desired sector under the read write head once the read write head is positioned on the desired track is called latency. The latency is one of the factor on which the disk access time depends. The disk access time is the interval between the instant a request is made and the instance operation is completed. Question 66. A optical disk consists of a circular disk which is coated with a thin metal or some other material that is highly reflective. Optical disks are highly reflective. They can be used to store extremely large amount of data in limited space. Question 67. Which of the following is not a type of optical disk? Winchester is not a type of optical disk. The Winchester disk is a type of hard disk. Other are all optical disk. WORM is nothing but CDR, that is CD that is recordable. So we have discussed few questions for your Diploma CET under the module Digital and Computer Fundamentals. Thank you and all the best for your DCET.